before my uncle passed, I was seeing someone and they didn't believe in God, but it didn't bother me because I believed in God, right? Oh, Lord. So, <laughs> why do y'all do that? Okay, don't judge me. If you're watching this video and you're single and you're contemplating whether you should be dating based on what you've been through before, uh, the answer is. Is it important or necessary to be healed before going into a relationship? This is this is an amazing question. Uh, healing from past traumas is a process, and you may not be a hundred percent healed because who is measuring and how do you even know? Um, because at the end of the day, like my mom being sick my entire life is has an effect on me, and that's that's kind of molded who I am. And am I healed from it? I would say. I have healed from it, yeah. But does that mean that it won't affect how I live my life? It won't affect how I treat my wife? No. It's gonna affect my wife, it's gonna affect how I treat my kids. It's just what I've been through. James 1, 2 says, Consider it a joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you experience various trials, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its full effect so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. Now, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives all generously and ungrudgingly uh, and it will be given to them. Uh, and so here I think it is James 1, 4 and let endurance have its full effect so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. I think all of our trials that we go through in our single life are meant to give us endurance and mature us and so that we're not lacking anything and i think a lot of people can enter marriage lacking things from their single life things that they haven't resolved things that uh they haven't even discovered really uh and so do i think you need to be completely healed from everything no because i think that's a process and that could take a long time uh depending on what it is um but the process should most definitely have started. And I think there needs to be a direct communication between you and God. And a, you need to have a clear idea from him that, okay, he wants you to date. He wants you to start looking. Um, and if not, then you don't, you shouldn't be dating. You should, you should wait a little while uh, because there's nothing wrong with waiting. Um, in fact, that's what, you know, I think it's, it's Psalms 37 talks about waiting on the Lord and, and he will provide, uh, he gives us the desires of our heart when we delight in him. Uh, and then also, you know, pursuing, uh, the kingdom of heaven above all else and everything will be added unto you. Uh, all these things should be, uh, heavy markers in your single life. Um, and so if you've been dating in the past and you've had some traumas from, your past, the past men you've dated or the past women you've dated, if there's something that's going to cause you to lash out or lose trust or not give the next person a good chance, then you are not healed from whatever that is. And um, you need to, to wait. Uh, and then also, if you don't know who you are in Christ and you don't know what you're meant to do, um, You don't need to be dating. You are you. You can't be. You can't be of any value to any anybody else. Um, you're not. Actually, uh, I'm not saying that Jesus can't come into your life or her life at any point in y'all's life. But if you're watching this video and you're single and you're contemplating whether you should be dating based on what you've been through before, uh, the answer is no. If you don't know who you are in Christ, if you don't have a firm idea of your imago day your identity in in god so um yeah that's so good that's important you know it's crazy because i was just singing earlier um i don't mind waiting on the lord i was singing that so it's so funny that you said that i ain't gonna sing it now but it's good um and i think that is important that you know who you are in christ that is very very important i had stopped dating for a while because i needed to figure out what it is that he was calling me to do 
And I was like, I don't. I'm open to dating, but I don't. Just because I'm like focused on other things. But I know who I am now, so I'm able to. But if I didn't before, it was, mm. <laughs> the path is horrible. Horrible. So, yeah. You've been through some stuff. I've been through some stuff. <laughs> But I'm good now, and are that's you, why I asked that question. Is it? Are you healed? I'm healing, and I think it's it's important to take the necessary steps to heal. Like I just I couldn't just heal myself, and it was more than just praying. I had to go to therapy. I had to go to therapy because it was. I've been to therapy too. So I I feel as though uh, if you're healing and you know who you are in Christ, and if He's calling you to date, then date. But yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, have you always kept God um, in your dating situation? <laughs> Are you asking me if I've sinned? No. I'm just asking you if, you know, like, okay, example. Um, before my uncle passed, I was seeing someone. And they didn't believe in God, but it didn't bother me because I believed in God, right? Oh, Lord. So. <laughs> Why do y'all do that? Okay. Don't judge me. I'm not judging you. <laughs> I'm asking, why do y'all do that? I didn't know. And I'm, honestly, I didn't know that it was important. Like, I didn't know what being equally yoked oh. meant. Oh, okay. I really didn't know that. Okay. So, you know, I made mistakes in relationships. We all but, have. Have you kept God centered? I would say yes, since my since Jesus became active in my life. Um, it's a beautiful blessing. You know, Jesus has really kind of taken over my whole life since 2017, since becoming a leader and obviously since being ordained. But no, not always. Always, you know, I was dating according to the world standards. I was dating just to hang out, just to chill, dating for a vibe. Dating for sex, dating for, you know, I, me and my boys, we would say, we would say, I, we just, I just need a little squeeze. That's it. I just need a little tenderoni. You know, I just need somebody. Yeah, <laughs> I just need somebody. You know that that uh, I could I could cuddle with and yeah, yeah. Look at her. She's she's singing uh, Bobby Brown now. Uh, but so no, I wasn't. I was. I was. I was. I wasn't buck wild. You know. I. I don't think I had. A, I don't think I had a. I didn't have a whole face. You didn't. I am. I didn't have a whole face. I wasn't like that. I'm not. I'm not like that. I ain't. I ain't. All. Oh, I ain't. I. I. Because uh, Jesus was always there. He wasn't very active, but he was always there, and so I always knew that. That uh, I. I shouldn't do that, and. Um, also, I didn't want to get nobody pregnant, so because that was gonna be horrible. So uh, I was definitely afraid of getting people pregnant. So I just was like, nah. I'm, and I was focused on. I'm kind of the same. Like when I'm when I'm focused, I'm focused. I was. Like you out here <laughs> doing like shit. <laughs> I don't like that term. You didn't like that term? No, I don't like that term. That's, That's what they call phase. it. I know. That don't mean I have to like it. Oh yeah, so a whole face is where you you wilding all outside, like outside. yeah, you like you like sleeping with a new person every weekend, um, or every month, or uh, you just sleeping with multiple people, uh, uh, not caring and not caring about their feelings, not 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 caring about what it's doing to you, and and the destruction it's having in your heart. Um, and, uh, you know, bulldozing, you know, having a black book, uh, be a sliding DMS, uh, you know, whatever you want to call it, you know, that, that's what, that's how I would define whole, whole face. Somebody might describe as a whole face. Somebody else might say that's something different. That's Do you that agree? Is. Um, I think anything that doesn't involve a commitment. <laughs> <laughs> you being a, you being a, uh, being a hoe because you don't necessarily have to be like have a sex or anything. You can still be a hoe just by talking to multiple people. So if it doesn't have commitment, it can be. Oh, wow. 
Maybe I am. Maybe I did have a whole phase. I guarantee you did. I guarantee you did it. Wait, you guarantee I did? Yes. By that definition. Will you identify it or not? No. I mean, because, so, I would, like, I would, like, there would be weekends when I would have a date every day. Like, Friday. Of different people. Different people. Uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We weren't sleeping together. Um, I, I mean, it wasn't like I was. Definition. That's your definition, okay? <laughs> I don't think I was breaking hearts. Well, I don't. Not not reasonable hearts. <laughs> not reasonable hearts, okay? If we hang out one time, that does not mean that I'm gonna be making you my girlfriend in two weeks. I'm sorry. Like, I can't even say nothing to that because I'm the same. So, I'm saying, like, if I, it depends. Like, if I've seen you, like, I've never seen someone three times in a row um, while seeing other people. Does that make sense? Okay. So, I will have like a first date or a second date and then have multiple first dates or second dates. But like, if I'm gonna see you like a third time or a fourth time, then I'm, I'm clearing the water. Oh, that makes sense. Okay, okay. You still had a. That's fine. I don't definition. call it a whole phase. But what do you call it? Don't ask me that question. This is mine. I don't have a name for it. No, he had a whole phase. Just, there was no commitment, so you was just. But that's so. Well, that's such a broad definition. Starting and bop. Thotting and bopping. <laughs> That's what you call thotting and bopping? No, no. I'm just oh. saying that I'm trying to follow your whole phase thing. I just think you were... I don't know. He, he was out there I'm not going to give it a name. Hmm? He was out there but wasn't in there. Yeah, he was, he was out there. He was outside. He was outside. Okay, yeah. So, but I can't really say nothing to him because... Whew, I, I, I lack commitment. I lack lacked commitment okay so so you was breaking hearts on purpose too Ooh. <laughs> she had us I she so had me going like i was <laughs> you i i never broke someone's heart on purpose i don't want to say on pur- like it wasn't intentional i didn't do it with the intention to break your heart but i didn't care that i did break your heart either so it was hit <laughs> hurt people hurt people and so I shouldn't have been dating in the first place but because I was yeah okay next question your followers are learning a lot about you I know not unless I edit it out I wouldn't do that (laughs) don't like that's one thing that they need to they need to see they need to see who you are what is what's dating like for you now what's dating like for me now take this back uh, uh, now I've kind of like given up on dating, honestly. Um, I have given it, <laughs> I've, I just, I've given it to the Lord. Um, I don't know. I think there's some things he wants me to do in my single life that, um, but I've just been asking to hear from him. So currently I, I don't really know, uh, exactly. Uh, I'd say I'm not. You know, I, it's so it's so it's a lot harder for me personally because you know, as a pastor, I have to meet somebody if I'm going to court them, if I'm going to date them for marriage, like they have to be okay with being a pastor's wife. And a lot of it's either I meet women that are like, I was born to be a pastor's wife, and that's weird. <laughs> that's weird. I've met I've. I've and they've basically said it to me like that. What? Is born to be a boy? Exactly. Oh or I meet women that run for the high hills. Or they do the oh well, that's your thing. That's 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 you. That's what God's doing with you. It doesn't really have anything to do with me. And so the thing is, that's incorrect. At least that's not what I the way I'm gonna have it. I'm not gonna have a wife that does her own thing and I'm I'm a minister and it's and weird. it's weird. 
Like what? So what? You not coming to church with me? Like you not? Like we're not gonna be on the poster together? Like what are you talking about? Like so that's what I meet a lot. Um, it, it is. I have essentially. I've been chasing Jesus so hard that you know. First of all, Jesus is the worst wingman ever. Okay, he's the best, but he's the worst because when Jesus stands up, I mean, I'm telling you, he's the light. It's like, and I mean, I guess they're cockroaches, but as soon as you turn the light on, they just scatter. I mean, as soon as Jesus stands up, everybody, every, I mean, there's it, always a problem. So far, there's always been a problem when Jesus stands up. Either it's purity, either it's doctrine, either it's, um, no, that's it. Because, but those are, those are big topics. Like, it's, it, it's just, and I just, just said, Lord, you're going to have to do it. And I'm waiting for him to show me who he, you know, because I believe, especially for pastors, you know, God is really present. And, and I'm not saying he can't be in your life. I'm just saying for me personally. Okay. Okay. So in my life, God is like, for pastors, wives, selecting that, like, that's really a God thing. I mean, that's really who is God calling you towards and, you know, who is God confirming? Uh, and that's really what I'm looking for right now. Uh, I don't know how long it's going to take, uh, but it's kind of like whatever, you know, it's, it's like, um, just, I'm hopeful. I enjoy my single life. I have a great time. Uh, I don't want to be single forever, but what you looking like that for? Yo, you should have seen, seen that look. Yeah, Yo, she oh, getting no, me that old. Oh, 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 okay. I thought you was, I thought she, mm -hmm. he definitely having a good time with it. Oh, no, I didn't mean to like that. Mm. I was just being like, single? being single is, I don't, I don't, I don't think that I was made to be single. Like he said earlier, I don't, that's not a gift that I have, but I enjoy it. While I have it, I enjoy it. And you should. It's Very good. well. You don't have to, yeah. I'm not going to get into the specifics, but. Uh, yes, don't. Anyway, we still have you as we, you, your 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 pure image is intact. So we have. <laughs> and it'll stay intact. Yes, it will. It will. Um, what does being equally yoked mean to you? Equally yoked. <laughs> okay. Paul says, "Be ye not unequally yoked with non-believers. What fellowship does light have with darkness? What fellowship does Jesus have with Belial?" So equally yoked from a biblical perspective, I believe, is that you two are on the same page with Jesus. Jesus is active in both of your lives, not inactive in one and active in the other. That's unequally yoked. Uh, ideally, you are comparable. That means maybe one is a I'm not, you can't measure it based on like how long you do a devotional or you can't measure it based on really any of that stuff. Uh, but there, there needs to be, you need to be on the same playing field and you need to be, there needs to be a pursuit. Both of y'all need to be pursuing Jesus. If there is a, a, a dual pursuit of Jesus, uh, and a recognition of the denial of self, Luke, Jesus said, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must pick, deny himself daily, pick up his cross. Uh, and follow me. And so there needs to be uh, a similarity of that. Like, there's no walk of Christ without a denial of self. That's just the way it goes. Uh, and so if you're dating someone that does not have those beliefs, if, if, if there's no, the like, scriptures are not written on their heart, you guys are not equally yoked. Now, I think the idea is the, the interest and the steps. Are they walking towards Jesus? Are they taking steps towards Christ? Maybe not at your level. Maybe they haven't grew up in church and know a bunch of scriptures and all that. And that's not what I'm looking for, but they definitely have to be in pursuit of Christ. And that is what I believe equally yoked is because it can't be. And when I say pursuing Christ, that means you have a biblical perspective of things like you want to know you you both equally view the Bible as authoritative in your life. So, yeah, because because without that, you're not even starting from the same spot. So, like, yeah, you have an issue 
I'm going to go to the Bible. What does the Bible say about it? And then we can talk up to other people or then we can talk about advice from family or whatever. But if the Bible is clear on something, there is no argument. And so you are not equally yoked with someone that doesn't have that same view of the Bible. If you, you ask them, that's a red flag. What is your view of the Bible? If they say, well, it was written by man and we don't know, it got errors, we don't know if it was, then that's a red flag and you guys are not equally yoked. You're triggering me. Okay. <laughs> I'm kidding, guys. I'm kidding. Um, okay. You'll be all right. This is good stuff. It is, it is, is really good stuff. Good, good. I think even with like being equally yoked a lot of if you don't believe in god or then i learned this but um if you don't believe in god and like i'm somebody who believes in god if i date somebody who doesn't our values are different yeah. the way we go about things are very very different and so what makes sense to me will not make sense to you and what makes sense to you is like dumb to me so <laughs> yeah <laughs> do you believe in dating apps i don't want to say believe in but like you think it's useful For me, I don't think there's an issue with dating apps. I think there are certain dating apps that are worse than others. There's certain dating apps that are trash and have trash people and that do trash things together. Um, but I think there are better dating apps. And I think there should be, Jesus should be present everywhere you go. So if you want to have a dating app and get no clicks, put Jesus all through your <laughs> profile, but you should, you should put, you don't have to put it. The answer to every question is Jesus, obviously not, but Jesus should be on your profile because Jesus is active in your life. And that's what I look for on dating apps. I'm on a couple. And when I look, if I'm assessing a profile, if I don't see, if I just see Christian, I'm probably not going to swipe. I'm probably going to be like, no, nah, I have to see something else. I have to see something because that's a pretty clear sign to me that you, you're Jesus isn't, isn't active in your life. And that's not what you're, he's not, you're not looking to have him be a part of your dating life. If you wouldn't put him on your dating profile. Now you, it doesn't have to be weird, but it just like, I need to, there needs to be a gospel. Like I said, a gospel presence is a green flag. There needs to be a gospel presence. And the, one of the questions I know is like, what do you, what is your typical Sunday? You know, if you don't mention church or whatever, um, you know, and you want, you want to see, you want to look for the, the name Jesus, not just God. Yeah, it is a hinge question. I'm on hinge. Uh, and, uh, hinge is a dating app. It's like one of the better dating apps. Yeah. Now, I think biblically, there's no ban. I think uh, you need to assess that for your person. Like if you keep, if you are incapable of letting Jesus be active in your dating life, if you are easily uh, persuaded and tempted to date people you know you shouldn't because of things that aren't important, then you shouldn't be on da online dating apps. And I mean, you have to be honest with yourself in the same way about being absent in dating. If you're not going to be honest with yourself, if you're not going to get real, if you're not going to allow Jesus to come into your dating life, then you're set for destruction and chaos. Like there's really nothing you're like, and that's the thing, like people, you have to choose, you have to choose Jesus yourself and you have to choose to put Jesus in every aspect of your life. You have to choose that. It doesn't just happen uh automatically like you have to like you have to actively put jesus on your profile you have to actually talk about these specific topics like when you meet somebody and it's tougher because you have no life connection you don't meet them out and about there's no like they're not in your your network you know some people say you should only date within your network which is fine but i don't think there's anything wrong with going outside of your network to find someone who you know, cause your network can always expand, but it's less likely you'll meet somebody on social media that are hinge or dating apps period that could assimilate to your life in Christ. 
And so that's why Jesus should be on your, your profile. And then, you know, Instagram is, I think the most popular dating site as according to people, uh, it's not officially, but a lot of people, no people, people use, you know, that's what they say. They say Instagram is like the most popular dating site. I mean, but I've always keep, I think that's one of the, when I was on the apps, it's one of the first things I said, Jesus love herself. (laughs) If you ain't love Jesus, you ain't got, you're not going to get any hits. Actually. Well, I mean, the they right hit. They weren't the right hit. The right yeah, hits, They was but, for something else. Yeah. And then people don't realize, like, and then you, you have a conversation with me, and you realize how serious I am about Jesus. And it's like, oh, that's different. So, yeah. I wouldn't go on a date in that, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't deter somebody from going on a date in that. You might meet your person. I would deter you if it's going to be, <laughs> like, temptation or... If you might get, I would deter him. Uh, yeah, because I, I wouldn't go on it just the simple fact that it didn't work for me, so I would never go back on it. But what's it again? It didn't work for me, so oh, I just wouldn't oh, go yeah. back on it. Yeah, so it could be it could be a breeding ground for bad stuff, but that any even church could be that. So yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Because a lot of people be acting buck wild in church. What did your last relationship teach you? Ooh. Uh. My last relationship taught me that you can't force it. And just because somebody is in church and is serving in church and on paper is perfect, uh, doesn't mean it's going to work out. God has to be in it. And like, that's one thing. Like I've met someone that was serving in multiple areas of church and we were equally yoked. We were prioritized purity. We had chemistry. We were attracted to each other and it still didn't work out because, you know, it just, I mean, I, I mean, I can go f- deeper into that, but that's not what y'all are here for. But basically I learned that just because they're good on paper don't mean they're really good for me specifically. God is the only one that's going to give me my wife because, you know, I've done everything I could. I mean, I met somebody that was, I did everything. I mean, I did everything I could. Like I found somebody that was perfect on paper, uh, but it still didn't work out. Um, because God wasn't in it. So, you know, it's disappointing, but it is what it is. You know, 